<laughs> Hello, Internet. Uh, this is Peter from Rush Machine. You may know me from game recaps and being snide. I'm joined by Ian. Hi, guys. And I think we know you from uh, GIFs and adverbs. <laughs> I don't know. No, you edit all the adverbs out, so actually no one knows that I use them all. The I, let, I, I let 70% of them go through. It's just... <laughs> Some some of my skips. So we're we're here today, not doing like a podcast, but actually doing some kind of half halfway towards a video podcast to discuss the new NHL dot com. Um, because Ian and I are consumers of hockey content, and we write you know a hockey website, but we actually have professional careers that are deeply embedded inside web technology. So if you're looking for uh, you know, a conversation of how Andre Birkowski is a cinnamon roll or what Tom Wilson's doing lately. This may not be the video for you, but if you're interested in some discussion of you know new web technology and the strategic preparatives behind the NHL.com redesign, redesign, we'd be happy to have that conversation with you. I guess we should start with this, though, Ian. Uh, what is your professional background? Um, so I went to UMBC's art school. Um, I ended up winning the senior art gallery there for a logo design that I did um, and, and a manual I did. Uh, I ended up being hired outside of college to a web design firm called Visual Data Systems in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, I recently, uh, after doing web design for about seven years, I got uh, promoted into the email marketing uh, department, and now I'm kind of the senior guy for email marketing. I help do a lot of other bigger projects and content stuff, too. Wonderful. Uh, and I uh, – this is Peter again. Uh, I had a focus in ethics and telecommunications in high school, and I was a, an award-winning essayist on that topic. And then I went to uh, school, but I didn't do technology in school, um, although I have been at the company I'm at now, Inform Interactive in Frederick, Maryland, for uh, more than 15 years now. Uh, I am. I have the position of director of technology, and I manage and run and direct a software system called Secure Consent, which is about empowering patients to better understand um, the procedures and clinical trials they're involved in. Uh, and that's that's my background. So I, I have a very serious interest in uh, educational design, uh, usability, progressive disclosures, ethical issues surrounding technology. Um, Super nerdy stuff. So and if you, literally, if you yeah. literally all your friends are web designers too. Yeah, I don't have any friends who <laughs> don't work in technology or are doctors. <laughs> so, so tough luck, wannabe friends. <laughs> all right, so um, Ian, I've got uh, the NHL.com website up. I guess some background on this. We learned, I think it was in the fall that NHL had partnered with MLBAM. That's uh, Major League Baseball. Is it Advanced Media? Yes. Uh, M-A-B-L-M, M-L-B-A-M, or just B-A-M, which is essentially the media company behind Major League Baseball who has done a lot of cool stuff with baseball, and they wanted to bring that cool stuff to NHL.com. Uh, NHL.com itself had been somewhat – I don't know. It had gotten – it had uh, aged poorly, I guess you could say. There's parts of it that are really useful – uh, that were really useful to certain people who knew how to use it very well, but it wasn't a very good website. I guess all of this was presaged and in, in preceded by last spring's more or less disastrous uh, partnership with SAP, uh, with the NHL, uh, who to put together an, an enhanced stats suite for the website, which I think was an unmitigated disaster. It increased knowledge for no one, no one serious uses as, as a resource, um, and it's generally bad. Um, so oh. there's, there's that, but, um, NHL.com, this redesign, I think it's only been up for maybe two weeks tops. Um, we're still seeing, they're still rolling out changes. You can already see some of the changes that have already taken place on the site. If you, if you saw it on day one, but, uh, uh Ian and I would just like to sort of click through the, the website and, and talk about what we see, I guess, Ian, we should start with this. What do you think was the main thing they were trying to accomplish, uh, with the redesign of NHL.com? I think I th from what I see, it's really just making it responsive and elegant. Um, it seems like the first thing they really want you to focus on, which, which actually I agree with, is the games. Uh, that toolbar at the top before, it was kind of a tinier thing. Uh, now I think they're trying to use this platform to really sell each individual game as a story within itself. 
and also just just basically get people to subscribe to NHL TV. Uh, that's probably going to be a, a bigger revenue thing for them uh, moving into the future. So the top makes sense. Uh, everything else feels responsive in a sense where uh, they basically have these repeatable stories underneath. Um, and I, I actually love the layout, frankly. I, I think the layout is is great. You know, um, Ian, would you would you explain what responsive is to folks who don't know? For for uh, okay, so responsive is basically uh, you you have kind of a mobile first concentration. So uh, back in the day when I was a web designer, you would basically design like a fifteen hundred pixel wide JPEG, and you would design first for a website. Now it's kind of the opposite. It's it's content driven first. You're you're thinking from the bottom up. Uh, so that's why when I look at this website, I immediately go, oh, it, it looks kind of responsive ish. In terms of it's it's basically you know built from the bottom up, and then there's a lot of development so uh, in the back end here that you can definitely see, so that each story kind of gets brought on like it's always updating. They're trying to make it super organic all the time. Um, so, but I, I, in terms of like the design quality of it, I think it's way better. Way yeah. better. Yeah, I'm, I think I did too. Um, to to sort of pile on to what you're saying there. Um, when when people say that this new site is responsive, I, I think the the most important thing is that it the same website operates whether you're on a desktop or a tablet or your phone. And I think I mean I don't have access to the NHL's analytics, but I would bet that thirty to sixty percent of their traffic yeah. is on is on phones now. Uh, I mean that's that's I usually access and if I, except for stat reports that I look at during games. I mostly look up NHL.com from my phone, from Facebook, from the bathroom. That's how, <laughs> that's how I use this website. <laughs> so, but you're right, right? I mean, the like, very first thing they, look, they point you at is the games up at top. And when you hover over the games, you see two things that drive revenue for the NHL, right? <laughs> like, you can either buy tickets, go there in person, or you can use Game Center, which is their basically like a vector to get you into use NHL.tv, which is a whole other mess which we should yeah. talk about uh before we let this go um and then you sort of get informational aspects right like when the game wh- who's playing whom and uh when the game's being played and the, fr- the the free game of the week apparently is tonight's game against uh dallas which is pretty cool uh and uh, a lot of people complain that you wouldn't you weren't able to see a whole lot of games at once i believe in the the very first iteration of this these guys were a lot wider so I'm um, i'm on a 1280 pixel wide screen right now and i can see one two three four five games uh without having to scroll which is not that bad i I think i mean i could probably see eight on the old site um but uh, these things breathe a lot more uh Mm -hmm. which which just means that there's more white space around them really uh it it looks less cluttered Uh, the question is is that useful or not and i i do think that they are making a lot of wise decisions about usefulness right like um i can't hover over it to point out what i'm looking at but like the time and the time zone and the channels that it's on, those are all useful information. And, and it's clear that they've set like a priority for them, right? Like you care what time this thing's on before you care what channel it's on. Yeah. Like they, they are thinking through what the person who's looking at this thing cares about, uh, which I, I suppose matters uh, I, aesthetically. And I, and I, I guess I want to hear your, your take on this, Ian. Yeah. This is a very gray website when you look at the stuff that isn't the like the big images. Does that mm-hmm. bother you at all? Um, no, I, I would say that gray and white, uh, and especially with, with ice and stuff like that, it, I, I think gray is kind of like a professional color. Uh, if, if I could say that, like, and also their logo is basically, it has iterations of gray. So it makes sense to me immediately. Uh, maybe it's a little drab though in the navigation, I would say, um, but it doesn't necessarily bother me. I, I, I think, you know, the readability of the site is just 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe, maybe let's drill into that. So um, I guess if you, as you go down the page, first of all, I guess in addition to converting a user into a person that, that gives the NHL money, this top bar does that terrifically well in addition to actually giving you information. And, you know, if, if there were scores, there'd be scores there instead of the time. And then they have their navigation, which I, I think is a disaster, but uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit a little bit later. Not a huge deal. I think the next thing is that they go right to the most important unit of hockey, of any sport, after the stuff above here, after the scores and the teams, which is the stories. 
And I think mm-hmm. these are the people to grab onto. And the NHL has always been pretty good. I mean, they've had some pretty tremendously talented writers uh, over the past few years. And, the, you know, the main unit of the homepage is dude scores cool goal. Dude has a ridiculous scoring streak. <laughs> Do, oh, oh, Ian hates this. Ian hates it when people score even number milestones. On teams. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no, it's like he played his 50th game ever. I, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> if he games, 100 games. Like, I know Alan May has yelled at me about how, like, any game in the NHL is precious. Yes, Alan May, that's true. But a milestone is not 100 games. A milestone is not 200 goals. I'm sorry, Louis Erickson. Sorry, Louis Erickson. <laughs> he's going to be pissed at you. Louis, when Louis Erickson hears about this, he's going to be furious with you. Louis, Louis Erickson's autograph is going to be worth 50 cents in 10 years <laughs> because he's not Alex Ovechkin, you know, whose milestones matter. Okay, anyways. I want, actually, I want to jump down to this. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, it's cheap, it's cheap media. What are you going to do? I do want to point out this, though. So whenever they have, they have these icons that hang at the left of the stories that identify the teams you care about, and they have these little circular images to represent each team. And they're beautiful. Um, and they, they have like bigger versions of them. If you go to like a game page, I, I think they're one. I mean, this is a bad example because I, th- I hate the Bruins logo and I hate the Coyotes logo. logo. Let's find a better example. Uh, there we go. There's just one bad logo in this one. <laughs> okay. Actually, just at a glance, it looks like all the NHL has terrible logos. I, I will, I will <laughs> say this about it is that the site, does, you're right about the white space. It's like, it, it, again, it, it seems like they developed it for the phone, and those things were on the phone content. And then when you bring it up to the desktop level, they're like, uh, uh. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not really sure what to do with this. So we're just going to have a bunch of white space. You know what I, I mean? I just reloaded it with uh, without blocking ads. Uh, so, I mean, you can see where they're you're squeezing every last cent out of you. Uh, you're, and as you go down the right side of the page, there's a whole lot more content on the right side of the page, which does sort of noisy it up a bit. But once you get pretty deep down there, they're no longer interested in selling you ads, which is nice. They have this big footer. I'm not going to – I mean, who cares about the footer? It's these crazy drop-down sites. They also have, like, like links like player sites. Like, yeah, go to Nick Backstrom's website, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. And there's a whole like Marty Turco's retired. It's like I don't I don't know. What to do. I don't really think they need that. Um, that's just me though. I have no idea what's going on with that. Uh, also, I, I I'm I'm scared to look at what the terms of service are, so I'm just going to skip over that. Uh, I, I guess let's see if we can catch like a video in here and see how they treat the video. Let's use Louis Erickson's 200th goal. So that's not a milestone. Oh god. <laughs> so okay, I, think this, I think this is really fascinating. So uh, on the left side of the page, first of all, you, you get a share link. Uh, everywhere, right? So they really care about getting you out of the website and onto Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. This is just a link. I'm surprised they don't have a Pinterest link in here. And email. I think that's great, right? They, they say, what do you want to get involved in the story? Do you want to share the story with people? Do you want to editorialize it on Facebook or Twitter? That's, I think that's an, a good understanding of what they're trying to do. And it's right up there at the top. I like that uh, they, they keep this really, really simple. You know, big headline with the person's name. I haven't noticed as many puns as I was used to on the old NHL.com. Perhaps that's important. Did you have you seen this page? How they do this right left split? So it's like you know uh, three a quarter of the page at the left side and then three quarters on the right side, and you scroll down and it starts highlighting the different stories as you move yeah, down. So, that's pretty neat, right? Yeah. You have these little like suggested like uh, the art of the the article is over there. Zoom in. I cool. will say that yeah, that's a really cool like programming you know design trick. Um, my problem with it is though is that people read left to right. Uh, so it's almost a little unnatural to have to shift your eye to the right to begin reading left to right. So if I would have designed this, I probably would have definitely made sure the content started to the left. Yeah. But, it's a, it's but, a weird balance. And I, I totally agree. And the, when I, when I popped it up, I had the same thought. I could, I think the, like they lit this thing at the left here, uh, drive too much of what this page is doing. Because yeah. what this does to the left is it communicates that this guy, the the little game recap Julian earns, is the parent of this whole pain on the right side. And that is important, but it's not nearly as important as the content itself is. Yeah. So, so it, 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 it probably isn't ideal. It's just nifty. Yeah. And, and again, I think this would be enough, more evidence of they designed this from the bottom up and then at the very top level for the desktop experience – uh, I don't want to say they didn't care, but they didn't really 
advance it to the point where it's optimized for desktop too. Yeah. Um, so let's let's play this video here. Let's see what happens. I, I have no idea what this video is. I see it's forty seconds long. Let's see if I. So it's a forty second video. Let's see if I have to do a fifteen second pre roll ad before I get to it. Oh yeah, I do. There's a chihuahua barking at me. <laughs> so if you any content you want to view on the site, uh, even if it's a direct uh, uh, Department of Player Safety video, you're going to have to look at a, a 15 second advertisement from Geico before you get to that. Uh, so now I'm actually on the site and I'm seeing this is, uh, by the way, this is how the NHL is going to do a takedown notice on us. So I'm just going to stop. This. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> embed a video in the video. I don't want to get Inception uh, <laughs> takedown notice. So that didn't happen. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's the video plays in line. It's uh, they're using Flash, so they're not necessarily doing this terrifically yet. But um, I understand why they're using Flash for now, though. And it probably degrades if I did not have Flash in, on the page. Um, I, I want to jump over to the stats, unless you got something that wants, that's jumping out at you here. I, I think it sort of tells us, you know, how they're how they're making their bread now, right? Like they are marketing stories, and they're getting you to buy stuff quick. Yeah, Perhaps. and and also sell their sponsors more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, drink a course. That's not terrible beer at all. <laughs> don't act like you know. By the way, you don't. I know you don't drink beer. But I didn't even go into how the embeds are all broken. You know. Oh yeah. You know what? Actually, let's go back to that. <laughs> no, no, that's that's a really important part. Part. Okay. So I yes, it is. So <laughs> I've got Louis Erickson's two hundredth goal again. Stifle your opinion about the goal. Uh, and it's right here. So if I hit this sh- uh, link button, um, oh, I just get a standard link, right? I don't get a um, an embed link. I don't get something that I could put into an article if I wanted to put it on Tumblr or something like that. Or, example, Russian Machine Never Breaks. Uh, if I hit play, do I get a different share menu? Is that how that works, Ian? I, th- I think so. I've actually been searching the video at area. So, yeah. So you've been... Oh, so if you actually mean you go to video here? <laughs> yeah. All right. So you can't share a video from the page there, but yeah. then you can share it from the video page. That's not that's not terrible at all. There it is. Yep. So, so there you get the embed. So now I get the embed code, and it's an iframe, which isn't bad, although it does give you that pre-roll video, that pre-roll advertisement, right? Yep. Although, I do, do look at this, though. It does actually have, like, a meaningful title for the first time ever, just instead of, like, total gibberish. So, <laughs> if, if I were embedding, let's just say, like, every goal scored on Brooks Orpic this year, I'd be able to find out, I'd be able to see, perhaps, if, if it was in the title. Uh, although, they very rarely say, you know, John Erskine screwed up. That's the that's the story. They usually say, you know, <laughs> John Scott scored the caps. That's the story. So, um, the, so, the embed, when we try to em- embed the video, it ends up having... It's the wrong proportion. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So the video actually has like 60 pixels of uh, blank space uh, underneath the video when you try to embed it. So we actually figured out that, you know, our, our width is six, 607 pixels wide. Mm-hmm. Uh, the height, we actually have to adjust it to 340. Which to doesn't, actually get doesn't it make have, sense. Yeah. 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 So they're a little jammed up. Also, this is a terrible way to implement this. Like this is just text here. Um, so it's it's not it's like deliberately hard to share. <laughs> That's like uh, everyone else. If anyone like else sharing this content, uh, like if you were to build something like this, you'd want to put this in a in a read only text area form element so that it's easier to copy the whole thing. But whatever, like that's how YouTube would do it. Um, I don't see what the point of these tags are. Uh, or at least I don't see the point of like a top highlight highlight real time highlight goal game. Like I don't I don't see what value that does it seems like it's sort of pulling out the curtain we also have redundancy in the dates and two different date formats this one doesn't make sense to anyone outside north america uh because and well i guess it does because there's no 13 month um but if this were happening in december if this were um if this if, you know like if this happened yesterday or two days ago it would say 2 12 16 people wouldn't know if that was december 16 or, uh, or I'm sorry, if, uh, if that people wouldn't know if that said December 2nd or uh, February 16th. Oh, it's playing the auto ad again. All right, skip it down. Um, anything else that's really bugging you about this? Uh, the search function barely works. Um, this guy? Uh, yeah, it, it kind of works, but they, it doesn't discover old videos, really. Hopefully that's, that's been fixed. Oh, yeah, and that's a great point that... Uh, they essentially divorce themselves of legacy content. Um, so the oldest video we hear about Bruce Boudreau goes all the way back to February 3rd. No, no, January. 
you saw January, January seventeenth, yeah, sixteenth. Yeah. So our oldest content here. So let's put in uh, Chris Clark. <laughs> Nothing. Who is Chris Clark? Let's put in Gretzky. So they have prioritized some videos that apparently they have re-entered, and they, you know, they've put the dates in backwards. So that's fine. Although it does seem a little weird that they're doing like this. Um, but yeah, yeah. So so it looks like they're like uh, maybe working through a backlog to put content in. I also I think this is the third date format I've seen uh, <laughs> on on like two different pages. Not uh, not the other world. That's a nitpicky thing that a snooty person like me would see. Um, you know, a lot, of, and that could be partially because of NHL.com. The old site kind of had a lot of legacy content that was different and changed and so they're trying to fix it as they go that's important and that's important to say like like this is not i'm not trying to be like unfair this is not trying to be like a unrealistic criticism of them like they have a ton of old content in a certain data format and if they want to serve that up on this new site they're going to have to go through a tremendous effort to re-encode that content and store it in their new management system it's it's not an easy thing to do uh, I understand it. It's just a, a pretty inconvenient. And when you get to something like the NHL.com vault, like where you can view any old game if you have NHL.tv or whatever, that becomes a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Um, uh, the fact that like there's been an erasure of old content is really disturbing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually I'm going to jump into stats. Well, mm, I want I want to hit something else first. So I'm going to go to show all scores, and I'm going to go to the last Caps game uh, if I can. Yeah. So I'll go to Thursday. Uh, and I'll find. Oh, that's awesome! Okay, so there's go ahead. this rollover effect where they have uh, an image of the arena mm-hmm. it is gorgeous, and the typography is just unbelievable. Like it's and they, really they do good. something that seems so simple, so obvious, but so few sites that deal in numeric information actually do. Yeah, when, when they're showing you numeric information, they use a mono space font. Which it seems like no crap. Of course, you'd want to use one where like every character takes up the same amount of space, but very few actually do that. Um, so I'm actually going to try and go to that page, um, the one for this the the Capitals game against the Wild, uh, and uh, I'm going to see what kind of font this is. I don't know, I don't know if you guys will see this or not. Um, I'm opening up a different window, but that's okay. So uh, the font that they're using on. Uh, it's like the numbers is something called Synteny. That doesn't sound right. Maybe that's not the monotype font. Maybe when they, when they just do it on like the stat pages. Um, so they've got their recap here, which is great content. Um, I mean, I don't read it, but it hypothetically is great content. They, <laughs> they, uh, when you're in the ice tracker, so when you're watching the actual game, this is your default view when the game's actually happening, right? So you can find out something akin to stats, although this really just gives you like a scoring summary. Uh, team's record, who scored in what period, uh, wh- what team had how many shots, uh, different different like high level categories. These things are, are really useful, um, but they're also not delivered in a super effective way. I, I also I can't stand this kind of view of content uh, where uh, there's the heading in the middle, and then each team's on opposite sides. It's really painful for the eye to, to go <laughs> goals now to the right. Now to the left. Got it. <laughs> Middle. Shots. Now to the right. Now to the left. Got it. It's just, it's not a I agree. great delivery of that. Um, and this isn't bad. I, I don't have a huge problem with this, but there, there's a familiarity problem uh, that they'll have to get over. And you can only get to everyone's favorite, or at least Super Nerd's favorites, like uh, stat sheets, if you um, go to the preview or the recap views. Oh, wow. That's the only way that you can get to... I couldn't find it. These super, yeah, they're they're really tough to find. I was I was sharing them on um, on Twitter for the last uh, few games. So Ovechkin got ten shots, and like now I can get everything about Ovechkin pretty quickly, uh, or at least it in, in all strengths. Um, but and for both teams, I can also get the play by play and the time on ice and all that stuff. But I can't get that easily on the page that I'm most likely to be at when I care about that information because it seems like they're trying to erase my need for that information. But I promise that these old HTML reports have other purposes in the organization, like workflow issues. Like they have to file those away and, and get them signed off on by you know the NHLPA or something like that. There's 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 no way that those ugly ass reports are going away because they serve other purposes. 
All right. Uh, that's all I have to say about it. One other thing, by the way, if you scroll up, uh, I, it, it go down to the defenseman sure. aspect. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I guess they dressed seven defensemen uh, instead of six. Uh, but this really bothers me, the fact that they didn't put in an extra space so that the fence lined up. That, yeah. that just drives me insane. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a lazy developer thing in my book. It, because the, what you have to do, do is put in an empty TD cell all the way across. Yeah, or, or like a repeater that waits till both of these are done to start a new one. Exactly. I imagine this is all one big table element, and it doesn't really need to be. Um, you could just do... It's actually probably better to have it be separate tables. Um, yeah. So if I'm looking at this guy here, um, I've started my table. Uh, all right. And the people are going to really think we're nerdy now. No, these are separate tables. There's no reason for these not to be lined up. <laughs> oh, my God. All Come right. on. That's okay. Whatever. Nerds. That's laziness. 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 It, but, but it's also us being, I mean, that may be a step too far. I don't know. Um, the sad side, I think, is just as, I don't know, I, I guess uh, in, in the team's defense, I think, or in the league's defense, I think these are pretty nice, um, except for how terrible some of these headshots are. I think they did like, a wonderful job with these like treatments, um, uh, with the, like, the circular images with the superimposed team on them. I think that's kind of wonderful. I'm, actually, I'm pretty worried about Morassic, by the way. He's kind of killing it lately. Uh, he's, he's got a real argument for the Vesna um, now. Uh, and they serve up, you know, your, your, uh, team, your headshot images. I think I can like hack this or something. Let me see if I can do this like, add two or something. Nope. Um, but they have a pretty smart, um, content management system to, uh, to like resize those images appropriately. And each player has like a, a pretty handsome summary page. Yeah. Those that, are one. That's probably the biggest win out of anything. I think. That it, that it aggregates all the interesting stuff about that person. And it's, and it's laid out just perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, there's stuff that bugs me about this. Um, like the fact that there are two rows are this, like the, the current season versus the career. Yeah. And that they choose some, some statistics. I mean, they do a fine job with a tool tip that explains what it is. But I, the, the stats they chose seem really curious to me, like power play points, shorthanded goals, shorthanded points. It just, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I get the feeling that they don't know what they care about. I do love that they've used, that they've, they did basically a separate ty- typography treatment uh, for um, numbers versus content. Like they're, they're careful to use this font family liberation mono, which is monospace font to deliver stuff that's tabular. Um, they even put a comma when your numbers get greater than four, greater than three characters, which is nice. I don't necessarily know, like if, if you're doing, in my opinion, if you're do- showing shooting percentage, uh, you should have uniformity to the number of digits. You okay. shouldn't just roll off the point zero, um, cause it makes comparison vertically a little tougher. Uh, but that's me. I mean, that's, that's super minor. I don't, this, this guy seems a little jammed in here. Yeah, and why is it why is it linking to the Washington Capitals, not Alex Ovechkin? That was actually a thing that they used to do. Yeah, yeah, and really, but, it should just be there. I guy fixed it. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> okay, that's about his last five games. This is wonderful. I don't know. So, so Ian, uh, before we wrap it up, I want to tell me what your experience has been because you are the main user of NHL TV. What have you seen so far? Um, with NHL TV, um, which is the thing that Game Center Live is now, basically the web-based cord cutter, still watch the NHL. Uh, it's hard to really. So before they used, uh, I believe, New Lion was the previous, uh, you know, where they had the Game Center experience, and it was it was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't a perfect solution, um, but. New Lion was great because you could it would get bigger with your desktop size. Um, you could choose what kind of bit rate or, or frame rate would come in. Um, so if you needed it high or medium or low, uh, that would be helpful. Um, so that was really it was pretty good. It was already pretty good, and then now it's a little bit more difficult. The screen is a uniform size and it's smaller than it used to be. Um, so the experience just kind of gets a little bit worse unless you do full screen. Um, Which and, really hurts your ability to, to do multiple things at once. Yeah. Um, and it's just, 
I, I don't know how to describe it. It's 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 about the same. It's behind about the same amount. It's not really any closer to live action than it was before. Um, Which is one I, of their stated goals. They wanted to get the the delay down a lot. Yeah, and then on top of that. Um, they jam in all this information below it, like those plays and embed videos and live content. They jam below it, and that's a great idea, but it hurts It hurts the actual viewing experience. So the fact that all that information is there, it makes it almost impossible to keep uh, it. You know, like it, it'll, it'll lag a lot. So there's a lot of weird decisions with it, and I would actually say it's taken – a decent step backwards, um, which is surprising. Um, One of the things I heard is that they were introducing 60 frames per second video. Have, have I, you seen that yet? Like, is the video I clearer? See it on I see it. I see the, the video that they use on Twitter, like on NHL.com's, like when they just post video of a goal or something, I've seen it. Uh, I don't really notice it if it is on, on NHL TV. Um, it may be something that's coming soon, but uh, I, I don't. It, it doesn't look any clearer. If if that's the question, it doesn't. No. Right. Well, uh, I, I guess in sort of wrapping this conversation up, uh, nothing's ever abandoned, and even terrible Gary Bettman admits that they're they're constantly working on improving uh, the website and the experience. I, I think uh, strategically. The NHL is really preoccupied with the idea of cord cutters, and m- maybe five percent of that also comes down to piracy as well. They're really worried about people no longer watching on uh, television or having televisions in the first place. So, how can they accommodate those people? And they still have tons and tons of licensing agreements with teams and with regional sports networks, which cause blackout rules, which ultimately make a digital only model like this not viable for the time being but it is the direction that they're going in um and they're they want to sort of start down that road now mlb am already has a strategy about that mlb am handles this stuff uh, has sort of lots of experience with this with major league baseball uh so we know we're going in the direction of like digital only cord cutters watch whole games on your phone your battery's dead before the third period but that that seems like the future uh, and it's all about iterative improvements to get there, iterative improvements to get there. And you're still there? Yeah, I'm still there. I was just, I was, I was listening to your beautiful language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts? I, I, I'll just throw this out there. I don't love the gray, although I'm glad it's not a, just another damn blue site. I'm so sick of why you websites. You hate that navigation. Uh, yeah, well, uh, navigation to me. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll hit this real quick. What this represents to me is that they said, these are the different kinds of content we have on our site, uh, except, yeah. for the, except for the exception of maybe like watch and shop. Uh, my impression is that these guys here don't reflect how users use the site. They reflect what content you have available on the site. I think I would rather care about what things people care about. Like, I mean, I would want to, if I want to explain what my site is, I would try to explain what my site can do for you. And I don't think, I don't know, maybe fantasy, I don't do fantasy, so I, perhaps I don't know. But I don't see the usefulness in Teams as a top-level navigation. And each time I add something to this site, I'm decreasing the, the user's attention to pay attention to this. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's already too many, eight, nine, 10, 11, <laughs> 12, 13, and then language. So that's 14 items I'm not sure that like standings and stats really differentiate themselves to each other, right? They're both storytelling with numbers, right? Yeah. News and video are also the same thing. It's just that these are predominantly words, except now we know that they almost always have videos attached to them. And these are all videos that sometimes have words attached to them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Scores, yeah. people immediately care about scores. Players are really just videos and stats and they're easily discoverable through stats and news and videos correct right like i just i just don't see the utility in uh, but you know what what you're talking about there it, it's like it's like what you were talking about before with the way the the web the design is structured from the bottom up rather than the top down <laughs> yep. the same thing with the navigation the navigation just isn't that important anymore uh, the way people use the site is rush machine shares a link to it on twitter or 
somebody on Chris from the comments shares a link on Facebook directly to a video. <laughs> like that's how that's how people get to the website now. Organic discovery, social discovery, search stuff. It's not nhl.com enter. People just don't do that anymore. So that's true. That's, you that's know, my rant. You know, and one thing is that uh, I want you to admit though that you do do fantasy. Just not fantasy sports. Yeah, the only – hold on. I have my dice right here. I'll, I'll, I, the only dan- fantasy I play involves uh, Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> I just rolled up. I just rolled a critical miss. I just rolled a one. <laughs> that was it on my D20. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Actually, the, the fantasy I play now is nerdy on the internet. Fan, uh, like we play using like Google Hangouts because uh, Steve is in uh, the Southwest now. So. Oh, that's awesome. I don't even get to sit around a table and – roll dice and play with graph paper and any pizza anymore. It's, it's just sitting at a computer being a nerd even more. I, so I have one thing that, hey. and it, it's the whole handling of this. It, it's another black eye in a sense for the NHL, um, that they rolled it out mid season. I know that Mike Vogel of the Capitals criticized it on his own Twitter account, like just the whole mid season thing. It's super um, disruptive, right? Yeah. And, I, okay, so MLB AM does a lot of WWE stuff. They actually do uh, WWE Network. Okay. And it, it was weird. The first night NHL.com had NHL TV, it was down. The first night they did WWE Network, it was down. It seems like their contracts aren't 100% fulfillment, then we go live. It's, we're just going to throw a mess up here and then fix it as we go. And I think that that's a really bad look for the uh, companies that they're doing work for. Um, and I, I just I don't understand why they would do it midseason unless it was really just a monetary thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Like, I love the idea of continuing to improve a website over time and never yeah. really abandoning it. But I also hate the idea of coming out there with something that hadn't fully been tested. And, that, and it's evident to me that it hadn't fully been tested by its performance in that first week. And on top of that, like we, we do this for a living, we would lose clients for that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's a bad look. And I mean, that makes your company look bad, but that also makes the company you did work for uh, look really bad. And, and, and to me, it's, it's just, I, it's just, you know, you have the, the, the SAP stats thing, and then you have this website, which a lot of people were actually excited for, you know, I maybe wasn't necessarily as excited uh, for obvious reasons, but um, you know, I, I I think that I was hoping that they'd really take that next next step, and I think they will take that next step. I really do think they will, but I, I think this just really hurts their brand. Like yeah. people are so frustrated with it already. Uh, it, it's and look at this. This is this is uh, beyond garbage. Although I do feel somewhat vindicated that they use shot attempts. Instead of, of course, your Fenwick, um, because, well, they do say yeah, AKA here, because I, <laughs> but I, because I, I think that's the more universal way of doing it. But the delivery of this is just beyond terrible that they're that's doing so like, a, like a stat that normalizes to 50% and that eats up. Mm, I mean, like mm, most of these guys, right? Except for the extremely terrible teams like Colorado, Colorado, <laughs> like, like Colorado, and the extremely great teams like LA, like Los Angeles, look almost identical. Which makes me think that, hey guys, we got this cool bar graph technology. Cool, let's <laughs> use it on the shot attempts. That's not, and also they're using close percentage, which the it, it shows me that they're not really paying serious attention to the literature about measuring possession. Like the best way to do it is to weight the different uh, uh, score situations and use uh, score adjusted possession but whatever not the end of the world it just tells me that they're, they're not sincere in communicating the information ag- aggressively it seems to me that they're really interested in showing off some neat html technology yeah yeah, um, yeah but they haven't they're not thinking about the user and they're not thinking about the information they're just thinking about the tech I'm sure Gary uh, looked at this and was like, "Oh, look how pretty it is!" And, and it was, it was pretty. It was cool, right? And yeah, I think this is. is a beautifully rendered table, by the way. This is, yeah. I, I, I love this. Um, that's a that's a ten out of ten table. Again, the designers of NHL.com take a bow. Yeah, I mean, you, you did a pretty great job, but you were poorly and, led when it came <laughs> to establishing what your requirements were and what the the values were that you wanted yeah, to accomplish. Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. And anything else you want to say? No, but I, I love websites and, and NHL.com, thank you for trying. 
Yeah, her. Let me let me just real quick. Let's do some some uh, greatest hits. Ooh. Yeah, there's a there's a big there's a beagle image. <laughs> Here's some people ghost riding the whip. <laughs> uh, let's see if this loads. Yeah, this does. <laughs> what is this? It was an Instagram that Brooks put up like a million years ago. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's all I got. <laughs> that's for Julianne Huff with that haircut. Yeah, that's how we got her. <laughs> Shreds.mp4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to do like a remix of it. I don't, yeah, whatever. Should. One day. All righty, man, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Internet, for listening and watching. Bye, Internet.